A sixth sense. Watch this woman caught in a casino security video, captivated by the stranger next to her, believing he's that long lost brother. Oh my god, that's my brother. Total goosebumps. That was him. That was him. Looking for the lost, whether they want to be found or not. Why did she wait so long? Since the day I was born. But tonight, something new and undefinable. Gut intuition. Is there something to it? Decide for yourself. Dina Lozada of Shirley, New York, is searching for her half-sibling. She is a mother and a wife, but still has a hole in her heart. I want a full relationship. I will get it somehow. I'm determined. Gina grew up as an only child on the east end of Long Island, New York, with her mother and father. From early on, like, why can't I have a brother or a sister? Until that fateful day 29 years ago, when a tragic event turned that hole into a crater. Gina's father died while on a construction job. He was only 48 years old. What happened? Went to work one day, had a massive heart attack, and that was it. Never came home. It was devastating. Gina's dad and best friend had passed away. She was inconsolable. Even her mother could not comfort her. I can't believe I have to go through this alone. You know, if I had a brother or a sister, we could kind of deal with it together. But this and then a bombshell. And she was like, I have to tell you something. She's like, there's two of you. What? She goes, you're not alone. It turns out Gina's father had a child with another woman before he married Gina's mom. But when the young woman's father found out, he banished the unwed 20-year-olds and forbade them from ever seeing each other again. So what did he know about that baby? My dad thought it was a boy, apparently. And later on, you know, he had, I guess my mother heard that her first child was a girl. So for about 15 years, I searched for a girl. And she said, you know, I don't know if I have a brother or a sister. I'm not really sure what name this person was born under, and I'm not really sure where. And I was like, you know, I'd love to help you. That's but... zero to go on. <laughs> Back on Long Island, it was a long time coming as well for our searcher, Gina, to break down and finally call her father's old girlfriend. Remember, Gina's dad fathered a child with her. Gina's would be half sibling. Why did she wait so long? You know, what if I call her and she denies it? But she's like, I have waited a lifetime for this phone call. Wow. Waited a lifetime to tell someone about her baby. Gina says the woman confirms the story about being forced to put up a baby boy for adoption. She tells Gina she has a half brother and gives her his birth name. Gina immediately tells all this to Pam. What did she need to launch this um, investigation? Luckily, I had the name. I knew probably where he was born. So I finally had a starting point. Pam spends hours scrolling through birth index records and then a match. I realized that I am definitely looking at what I believe is her brother. Ka-ching. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Pam makes the three-hour trip from southern New Jersey to New York City to the east end of Long Island to lend Gina the support she needs for the phone call of her life. We are at Gina's house, and we are getting ready to contact her brother for the very first time. This is so exciting. Oh, my gosh. Together, they compare the photos on the Facebook profile of the man oh Pam has found and Gina's father's contractor license. The resemblance is unbelievable. Remember, Chris has no idea that he may even have a half-sister. Here comes the moment, right? Oh, the moment we've all been waiting for. Gina is trembling, so nervous that Pam has to dial the phone for her. Okay, I'm doing it. But Chris isn't home. It's Chris's wife who answers the phone, and Gina doesn't want to leave a message. Um, I'm actually searching for family, so I'd really like to talk to him first. You ought to coach her on what to say, because it's important that you don't scare these people off. When you are contacting an adoptee, you don't really know if they know that they're adopted. Okay. The wife sounds suspicious, but still gives out a number for Chris. She was very nice, but I think she was a little taken back. Well, first of all, I'm a female looking for Chris. Yeah, hi. So Who are she you? was 
like, yeah, she wanted to say that. Gina like reaches this. Chris on his cell phone, but only for a moment. Hi, Chris. Um, my name is Gina. And do you have a minute? Is this a good time to talk? It is not going exactly according to plan. Yeah, can I call you back in a few minutes? That telephone reunion, 29 years in the making, is falling apart. He's on a conference call right now. 15 minutes go by, and this time he's not answering. Answer the phone, Chris. God. Oh no, his voicemail answered. Here comes attempt number three. Ah, you're ringing. Gina doesn't want to pester, but she feels her chances slipping away. Pam takes matters into her own hands, texting Chris on Gina's behalf. I just text, um, hi, it's Gina again. Can you talk? I have information for you. I mean, it's kind of enticing. If we don't hear from him, then maybe we should call him back. Up next, sometimes it's not science that cracks the case. It's a sixth sense, a gut feeling. A weekend trip to a casino, and Gina thinks she unbelievably might be locking eyes with her missing brother. And it's all caught on tape. So you were having this reaction not because of what you saw. Oh, no. No. What I felt. Stay tuned. After 29 years of searching, Gina feels achingly close to making contact with her half-brother. He picked up briefly before, but now nothing. Gina is starting to wonder if this simply wasn't meant to be. In fact, it's not the first time she believes she has barely missed connecting with her brother. Just days earlier, Gina had a close encounter at, of all places, a casino. You and your husband decide to go gambling. Yeah. We love Atlantic City. Take a look at the surveillance footage 2020 has obtained from the Golden Nugget Casino. You see Gina and her husband suddenly come to a dead stop. Gina says she is seized by the strangest feeling. You see her gesturing to her husband. She feels drawn to someone at the roulette table. There's Gina. And see the gambler in the hat right there, not two feet away? A total stranger. But as the roulette ball bounces around, Gina feels like her number just hit. Oh, my God. That's my brother. What are the odds? Total goosebumps. I can see them. My whole arm. body just, like... This is what happened. So you were having this reaction not because of what you saw. Oh, no. No. What I felt. What do you think that was? I don't know what I believe in, but that was something from above. But if it was him, Gina blows a chance to meet her big brother. She just can't work up the courage. You want to yell at the screen as she turns and walks away. Days later, between those attempts to get Chris on the phone, Gina questions his wife. Let me ask you a question. Was he just in the Golden Nugget on Sunday? That was him. That was him. So many people spend their life wondering, you know, have I been in the same places as the person I'm looking for? Um, is that the person I'm looking for across the room? They look like me. Sometimes they are. Exactly. Sometimes they're right there. Exactly. After that fateful casino encounter, hours of unanswered phone calls straight to voicemail, followed by frantic texting and about five miles of pacing, all the love bottled up inside Gina for 29 years is about to finally come pouring out. Here we go. She finally gets the man she is convinced is her long-lost half-brother on the phone. Hi, Chris. It's Gina. It certainly is. Yes, I finally found you. Are you shocked? Oh. Something so many of us might take for granted. A simple phone call. In this case, life-changing for both of them. Wow, this is crazy. I've been looking for you for 29 years, Chris. Gina has a million questions. What do you do for AT&T? Do you have any children? You have a stepdaughter, but do you have any other... No children? How long have you been married? What date in September did you get married? Wow, my mother guessed that date, actually. That was her parents' anniversary as well. Later, we'll do it. They make an appointment to meet in person, and you're invited to the reunion. That's still to come. Well, it was great finally talking to you. 
and I'm um, very happy that I found you. A lucky summer day in Atlantic City, New Jersey. After 29 years of searching, Gina Lozada is heading back to the Golden Nugget Casino to collect a jackpot. Gina had spotted this man, Chris DiPaolo, who she is sure is her half-brother. Now, her head-spinning moment at the roulette wheel is about to be trumped by this. Like your dad. It's unbelievable. Sometimes just one hug isn't enough. Chris and Gina return to that same roulette table at the Golden Nugget where she had that jolt of intuition about the gambler in the hat. You were oblivious and you were just playing and focused. It was just so funny. I sat there and watched you and it was just crazy. Because I knew it was you. It's crazy. Persistence. Webster Dictionary. Persistence. Gina Lozada. I just thank her. I mean, thank her and be a good brother. Chris and Gina say they are so sure their personal details match up that they don't want or need a DNA test. They say they know. There are lots of siblings who grew up and spent their whole life together and might not be as close as Gina and Chris seem to be. I think he's just, he was very open to receiving her. If only her father had ever known. If you ask her, she would tell you he does. Right. 